Your absurd defiance ends here, Hatcher. Hey guys, got a new video for Path of Exile uh, 3.23, and th in this video we're going to go over my Transcendence Armor Stacker uh, that I've built for uh, the League. So, uh, what is this character? It's a Scion Armor Stacker, and we're using uh, Transcendence as well to uh, become very tanky, and in this League we did manage to get all the way up to 85 all res, which is actually pretty hard to do in League. Uh, so, the build ended up being very tanky, probably one of the tankiest versions of this Transcendence build that I've made. So I usually do try to make one of these every league, and usually we get to about 80, 80 all res or 81, most of the time like staying around 79-ish or 78. But this league, uh, thanks to some of the charms, we're able to actually get all the way up to 85. So, the build ended up being pretty tanky, and we're going to go over how I built the character, um, how you could build one if you do want to try, but I'm going to warn you guys, this build is very expensive. Yeah, very expensive. So, first of all, we're going to run a Maven, and let's see, we do have it on Uber, right? So let's do Uber Maven, and let's see uh, what this build looks like in Maven. So, right now, the skill of choice is going to be Molten Strike, um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, because we're using Original Sin, and Molten Strike generates tons of hits, uh, we can actually get our Wither stacks with just by using this one little charm here. So without this charm, like if you used a skill like Smite, this charm would not be enough to actually get you up to 15 Wither stacks. But since Molten Strike generates like tons of tons of hits, we are actually able to get enough uh, charms. Or not charms, um, Wither stacks. So, let's see. Let's see what this build can do in Maven. This is the first time I'm actually running Maven with this build. And since we are pretty much very, like, heavily focused on um, defense, the um, damage is not really all that low. I mean, not really all that high. I mean, it is pretty good, but um, not a lot, not as high as some of the other um, armor stacker variants that you can build.
Right, let's get rid of these guys. And you know, I never really did like the memory game. So what we're going to do is just do something like this. All right, very easy. So let's we'll just kill Maven off real quick. And just drop these boys over here. All right, pretty easy. Alright, so you see this build pretty much immune to most damage that these uber bosses can throw at us. I don't really think there's much in here that can kill us unless we like run into one of the beams and take a lot of like degen stuff like that. So he did end up taking quite a bit of damage there because we just didn't use uh, Molten Shell. Okay, that's going to be a problem. These, oh, we can kind of stand in them. Okay. Alright, so most annoying memory game, and the way I like to do these is we just stand over here at the bottom, and it's a very easy way to actually do the memory game. Probably the easiest way to do it is you just kind of go like this, All right, and it's done. Alright, now we just gotta find Maven, there she is, and uh, don't die. Because that would be kind of bad. Let's wait for this like debuff to kind of run off. Alright. So, pretty easy Maven. Okay, so let's get into a couple of things about the build. So, what is the goals of this build? What are we trying to do here? And so, pretty much, we are stacking armor, we're stacking aura effect, and then we're running transcendence to... Uh, reduce the elemental damage we take by quite a bit and since we're running transcendence we're converting 100% of our physical damage taken from hits into chaos and elemental and then that pretty much just gives us all of our tankiness and then for sustain we are running um, zealot's oath and then we're doing a couple of things uh, something i kind of uh, experimented with last league when i was delving and it is using this um, guardian ascendancy over here so we can get um, this thing here, ours from your skills grant 3% increased uh, recovery rate of life. So this works similar to the Necromancer aura in that it gets attached to each one of your auras and then that scales with aura effect. So this 3% is actually like 7 or 8% for me. So we get a lot of um, ES regen and my character currently has about um, 3,800. And when we use Vol Smite because um, smite is an aura, right? So when we get our smite aura, this goes all the way up to about 4,000. So 4,000 ES regen, you can get this number up uh, quite a lot higher. But this is sort of the number we're at right now. Alright, so let's go over some of the character stats. So start off, um, let's see, we have our effective uh, hit pull of 1.7 million, fizz max hit taken 1.2 million, fire max hit 777, uh, cold max hit 750, lightning max hit 651. Uh, so, pretty insane EHP and max hit taken numbers, and it's pretty safe to say that this character just isn't dying from any kind of hit damage. So this is with Molten Shell up, so what does it look like with Molten Shell is down? So with Molten Shell down, we have 880k max hit taken, our fist hit is still pretty high at 648, uh, fire max hit 539, and cold 467 lightning max hit is a little bit lower at 377 so even without molten shell these ehp numbers are enough to tank pretty much any kind of uber boss uh, one shot ability in the game okay uh, let's go over our energy shield we got 5k es about 4k es regen this can go up by quite a bit more with a little bit more optimization at armor we're at 3.9 million so let's just say 4 million armor is pretty much 4 million at this point and we have a decent amount of block. Our resistances are all 85 and 
we look at the full DPS, it's at um, 268 million. And that is with Vol Haste active, I believe. Yes, so it's with Vol Haste, it's about 190 million. And I have set the Molten Strike config to be very conservative. Basically, I calculated 12 hits is what you're going to get um, with Molten Strike. I do go over Molten Strike later on in the video, so you can go check that out. But there is no other weird stuff going on. I think I'm not enabling Vol Smite. If like we enable Vol Smite and Vol Haste, um, our damage is quite a bit higher. But And you can get this in a lot of maps. Um, but some people, you know, they really don't like this kind of stuff. And I actually, too, um, the main reason I'm turning these off is because it, it kind of changes how much regen you get. As you can see, with Vol Haste, it actually is giving me more regen. So I thought... It makes you think you have more regen than you actually do all the time. So it, I do have these off. Same thing with the Vol Smite. Vol Smite does change your regen. But okay, so that is um, our character stats. So this build was built just to be able to tank pretty much any hit in the game. And I pretty much have done that. You can see the Maven was just a piece of cake. Um, and then also I have a video I put out of tanking a times 4 Ghosted Atsiri double flame blast which is probably one of the harder hitting abilities in the game. Probably, I think it does more damage than the Maven uh, explosion. You know, I've I've done all the other Uber uh, bosses, like the Searing Exarch. You can go, like, eat all the balls, like, uh, what's his name, Pac-Man, <laughs> and go eat the balls, and then uh, his explosion thing does, like, zero damage. But anyways, so that's sort of the goal of the build. Now, can you do um, Valdo's maps on this build? Um, it's not... So I've done a couple of them, but... Like, say, for example, the Mageblood map with the 100% Delirious and the one where uh, you do 10% less damage per item. That one is not really uh, doable on this, the way I have this build set up. And I think pretty much is, well, it's not really enough damage. So you can pretty much tank most of the abilities that the, the Fear do. But um, since the damage is pretty low, what happens is... They get off a lot of their abilities, and eventually what's going to happen is they're going to get stacked on with like two degen layers, and then you take a big hit and you're going to die. So they're, the bosses just are just alive for too long, and they get off too many abilities, and eventually something is going to kill you. So not really um, advisable for those, but you know, if you're courageous, you could probably take this into a uh, voided map, and as long as you're playing good, you can survive most of these um or pretty much all of the one-shot abilities, but when they start stacking up on top of each other, that's when it does start to get dangerous, and this character probably could die in that situation. So this character probably, uh, if you want to do like Ubers, um, pretty easy Uber bossing. I mean, there's probably better builds to do Ubers on, but uh, also Delve. Probably Delve would be really good on this, because in Delving with this setup, uh, you could probably change the, the way it's set up for a bit more damage, um, and then... Have a really good time in delve go all the way down to like 6k with that uh, with this uh, setup pretty easily probably okay so let's get into the character uh how we're building it so first of all uh let's go into um let's see let's go into the transcendence setup so what do you need to run transcendence and uh the main thing you're going to need is first of all you have to get a lot of resistance because transcendence does reduce your maximum res by 15%. So that's a pretty big uh, number. And the way we're getting our resistance is, first of all, uh, we do have this Purity of Fire. So Purity of Fire is giving us quite a bit. I have about, I think, over 300% aura effect. So this is like 15 uh, res. So this right away counteracts the trans uh, Transcendence downside. So we'll be at 75 all res, and then we're getting another one here, and then we're getting another two here. So that's three. And my Militant Faith is actually giving me two here. So and this and this spot is a little bit sad because this spot is 6% aura effect. But this Militant Faith is actually pretty crazy because there is another plus one to all res over here. And I don't know, it's a little bit out of the way to get. So I haven't really gotten it. But there is, uh, you could actually get this. And then you could probably anoint something like Soul of Steel. So that's another plus two. So you'd be at like 87 and maybe if you change the way you path on the tree, you could pick up, like, this one here, Barbers, and that's another one, right? So then that's 88% uh, all res, 
And so, th I mean, that's pretty crazy. And there's no real reason why you need that much tankiness. But just saying, you can probably get some pretty crazy um, uh, numbers if you do want to go invest more into tankiness. Okay, so, and then after that, we're using a lot of charms. So we're using three charms here. All of them are the same. It's plus two max fire res, plus two max fire res, and then uh, mana reservation. So this gives us another six. And then I have another... 2% on my that which was taken jewel so that ends up taking me all the way up to 85 so this kind of militant faith is not going to exist in the game probably ever I mean there are some other seeds that you can get with a plus one here uh, and maybe some over here and here but they uh, are extremely rare and it probably will only be like three or four in the game throughout the whole league so for most people you're going to be if you do try this build you'll be at 83 all res with this setup and then if you do end up dropping this area for more damage then you'll be at 80 which is still very good and even at 80 all res you will be able to tank all these uber boss abilities um, like i was doing i mean because last league the league before that even at like 78 79 all res was still able to tank all those abilities when you do run Transcendence, you are going to need to convert all of your physical damage taken into Elemental or Chaos because your armor is not going to apply to the physical damage you take, so you're going to have zero physical damage reduction. And the way we're doing this is a couple of things. So first of all, there is a Mastery on the tree over here for 10% uh, as Chaos, and then I have on my Helmet. Uh, we have 18% on the Helmet, and then we get 12% on the Chest. And there is 28% on the shield, and then we have 15% on the flask, and then my watcher's eye has another 24%. So that basically is, it's a little bit over 100%, and when you do go over 100% taken as, I guess, yeah, you do start to take increased damage, but um, when I don't have my flask up, I'm going to be at like 90-something-ish uh, converted. And when you don't have the flask up, it is nicer to have more of like a buffer, you could say, right? And the increased damage taken, honestly, isn't really no noticeable when you do have this much um, damage reduction. So I don't really care if I go over and start taking increased damage as long as when my flask is down, I'm sort of protected against physical damage. Okay, so that's um, the transcendent setup. And aside from that, uh, we are doing a very uh, sort of standard armor stacker setup over here the tree here is pretty common i think a lot of people do use it uh, let's get into what we're doing for our regen so for the regen um all of our regen is basically coming from the uh fire mastery here regenerate one life per second per for each uncapped fire res and we have about 801 percent extra here and then uh we do have some flat regen on the chest and the rest of that just coming from a level 25 vitality. And then all that gets basically, um, regen gets doubled pretty much by the guardian ascendancy over here and ends up giving us uh, quite a lot of regen. Oh yeah, and then I do have a mastery over here for 2% and then 3% uh, on my watcher's eye of uh, what, that which was taken. Yeah, so that's pretty much all the regen and thanks to the guardian ascendancy, we're all the way up to 3,600. In the hideout and about at 4,000 or the freeze grace we go up to 3,800 and then with uh, smite the smite aura then that'll go up to 4k so 4k es regen in combat which is pretty cool actually 4,200 if we do end up using fall haste at any point so that is pretty cool for damage scaling um, pretty much everything is the replica dream feather and then Original Sin with Withered Stacks to get uh, our damage, and Molten Strike with Nimis. And the way you calculate your damage for Nimis is basically all the return projectiles are going to hit. Uh, that's because they they shoot out and then they return to where you are. So as long as you're standing inside the boss, or like on the boss like this here, the projectiles are going to shoot out and then they're going to return right here and they're all going to kind of shotgun the boss. So that's nine guaranteed hits because we do have... Molten Strike fires four, and then uh, Awaken GMP is five, so that's nine. Nine guaranteed hits, and then I did calculate in the Molten Strike calculator with my current um, setup, and then so I'm pretty much getting three guaranteed hits on small targets. So about three to four, it, you know, if it's a big target, probably four. So three to four hits, so I've calculated it with uh, 12 total uh, hits. And we're attacking about eight times per second, 
So about 96 hits uh, per second, which is pretty insane. So that's why we're able to actually cap out our Wither stacks uh, with just only a 15% uh, on hit. And also the um, Watcher's Eye mod for uh, gain 23 yes on hit is pretty insane because if, you know all the hits we're generating are all generating ES and so we end up getting quite a lot of extra sustain from that. Okay so quick uh, gear overview for the gear we're using. Um, so helmet, this helmet is uh, pretty insane. I decided to go for a gem level helmet this league. Uh, you could craft this with like fire res and then mana reservation if you want and then just go for a plus two un unveil but I did want to try going for the unveil well, not the unveil the plus gem level helmet so I ended up turning out pretty nice this helmet was pretty expensive to craft at the time it did cost about probably like two mirrors or a little bit more than that to actually craft this so you notice we do have no crafted mods on the helmet everything is pretty much as high as it will get the item base is only item level 82, so we can't roll tier 1 increased energy shield. So, you know, it is as high as it will get. It took like, what, 180 divine divine orbs to actually divine this up to <laughs> perfect ES. So that kind of hurt a bit. But anyway, you can make these for quite a lot cheaper. And if you don't buy the physical taken as chaos base, they are a lot cheaper. So you don't really have to um, spend <laughs> as much on the helmet. Um, as for the chest, so this time we are going with the fire over cap and global defense. So global defense is giving quite a lot of extra energy shields. Why I like the combination of global defense and one over cap mod. I know a lot of you guys like the double over cap for going for more damage. But if you see my build, don't really have that much cold res to even take advantage of it. And I guess you could get small clusters with um, fire and cold. But I think ideally the small clusters I'd want is more intelligence to scale up the ES and that's also going to scale our ES regen and give it a little bit more sustain and more tankiness. I don't really think it was worth it to go for a double overcap and the increased energy shield you get is very nice. Right so why uh, I guess why why the fire overcap and the main reason is the fire mastery um, and there's no real use uh, use for me to use the cold over cap on this build because we're not using Aegis, right? So if you're using Aegis, you can use the cold over cap and then you can use Purity of Ice and Aegis and that synergizes very nicely for your um, cold res, right? But this time we are going for the fire and Purity of Fire and getting our fire res, max fire res from the charms. So pretty much I think for Transcendence, this league, you do want to have a fire over cap. All right, so the gloves, these are uh, sorcerer gloves. I have a video on how to craft these. Um, as far for the implicits, when I made these, I was originally gonna go with smite. And so that's why I have the withered, you inflict inspire slower. But I think at the end of the day, this isn't really needed. And I probably will recraft these for mark effect because that's gonna end up being a little bit more damage. Okay, so original sin, these are pretty pricey right now, about like a mirror, 0.9 mirror, but um, this does really give you a very big damage boost with the uh, withered stacks, so I do recommend you get this. You know, you can of course build without this, and you still will be able, the build will be functional, but you probably will lose quite a lot of damage. And what you do is, you basically just remove uh, Void Manipulation for Lightning Pen. Alright, so for the amulet, still using the Eternal Struggle because uh, it is pretty nice with the aura effect, calling strike, global defense, a lot of stats. I do have to actually divine this. I haven't divined it since like league start, so <laughs> uh, I keep forgetting to do that, but something I probably should do. And then use tempering catalyst for to increase the global defense roll up to like 18%. Uh, I think that's yeah something I should probably do. Uh, Nimbus, yeah, just your standard Nimbus. Try to get one with a good corruption because they are pretty cheap. Uh, the Dawnbreaker, you do want to have a max roll on the explicit physical damage taken as fire because, well, you know, that's it. you do have to hit that 100% uh, conversion and then you are going to need a corruption of fizz damage taken as some kind of element or chaos. If you take if you take the damage as chaos, then that damage roll basically just becomes, um, it, it just uh, gets negated because we're CI, so we don't take any chaos damage, so... Taking it as chaos is going to be uh, probably the best. You know, if you can get taken as chaos, it's going to be, um, uh, what do you call it? It's going to be the best type, but you know, you don't really need to. You can go if you, uh, go for fire or cold or whatever, right? Okay, so for the boots, uh, March of the Legion, of course, right? So we have our March of the Legion boots, and then we have 
uh, the Mage Blood Belt. I still need to buy a corrupted one with the Grace R effect. Uh, probably next up to do on my um, what do you call it to do list. And that's pretty much the gear. Let's go over the flasks. Flasks are uh, basalt, stibnite, um, silver, and I'm exp you know there's a couple of flasks you can use for max damage. You do want to use a jade flask. It's going to give you quite a bit more armor. You see we're at 3.9 million with that. And with the ruby we're at 3.7 so why am i using the ruby flask and the ruby flask is going to actually give me a little more region you see 3.8 here and then with the jade flask we're at three well basically it's basically like 100 regen extra it also does reduce the fire damage we take so the like searing exarch balls or a series double flame blast is reduced by quite a big amount by this flask so, in the end of the day, um, Jade Flask, a bit more damage. Ruby Flask gives more regen. It also does give you armor because of our Grasping Mail. And um, it does reduce fire damage even more. So, it is kind of a nice middle ground for like tankiness and a bit of damage. And of course, if you're mapping, just pop in the Quicksilver. Or you can even put a Phasing Flask in here if you want to get Phasing into the build. Right, and then Taste of Hate. Uh, I do want to try to get a very nicely rolled one because they're not that expensive. Okay, so for the jewels, we have our three one passive voices. You can make this work on three passive voices because I do have some extra points lying around. So there is two points over here to spare. So that's, you could replace two of these one passive voices with um, three passive. And then the last point you would probably have to remove, it's gonna be this reservation one here to fit if you, if you use one more three passive. And you can see my reservation is at 33 right now. If I remove this, then we go down to 10. So that's not bad. We can still attack and do everything fine. But the only problem with that is your mark. So problem with the mark is the mark is costing about 25 mana. So you can't actually mark on hit this. And one way you can do that is if you have inspiration in here. Uh, but then you lose a gem socket or you can reduce the level of your sniper's mark you can also change some things around so right now my helmet has plus one to int gem so if i actually put my awakened enlighten in here um then i'm actually going to get another level on my enlighten and you can actually get some more mana as you see i'm at 23 and if i did say put another 50 percent aura in here instead of like vitality you can probably squeeze out enough uh, reservation. All right, so now we're at 40. So the downside to that is the vitality level is a lot lower. You see, now we don't have a level 25 vital vitality. We did lose a bit of regen, and we also did lose some energy shield because of discipline not being in the uh, helmet. So uh, it's something to consider, but you can get more mana reservation like you saw here. We're all the way at a uh, we're at 40 and that's totally fine to actually start casting your mark on hit and that kind of stuff so you can run this setup on three three passive voices instead of one if you wanted okay so as for other jewels uh the milton faith uh you're going to want one with reduced mana cost of skills ideally and increased effective non-curse auras because we don't have any other sources of reduced mana cost. If we don't have this jewel, um, you can see we can't actually use our Grace Aura. We don't have enough reduced mana cost of skills to actually use Grace without this Timeless Jewel. So it is something that you probably want those two affixes, and then you want to look for one that doesn't replace anything, and preferably has plus one to maximum res on this node here, or mm, I guess this one is okay. You're going to lose some energy shield, but ideally over here, and then or even it doesn't really matter if it has if it does if it um doesn't have this max res just use one just look for one that has these two um, affixes and doesn't replace any of these nodes okay so for the unnatural instinct this is where you're going to get your corrupted blood immunity and this does actually pick up all these nodes here the small nodes and gives you a lot of devotion so that does increase the aura effect you're getting from the jewel the timeless jewel and also the reduced mana cost of skill so you see i'm at 160 devotion so that's 16 aura effect and 16 percent reduced mana cost of skills so for the that which was taken, the main mod you do want is the Withered on hit. And if you can get Withered and plus two fire res is probably going to be ideal. And then if you can find some other good mod, right? So for me, I got the regen. You know, you can there's a lot of other ones like 
there's mana reservation, there is magic utility, flask effect, there's withered effect. Um, there's a lot of other good mods you could look for, but the main ones you are looking for is the withered on hit if you're using original sin, right? So that's the main mod you want. And then after that, plus two fire res. Okay, so for the Watcher's Eye, you are going to need a double conversion Watcher's Eye. So either a double purity of elements or a purity of ice, you know, a purity of fire and purity of elements. And since we do have quite a lot of regen, you could, you could probably skip out on this ES on hit and then go for like a leech, a damage leech with wrath, or you could go for a regen discipline. Um, that'd be nice too. So there's a lot of... Um, budget options you can do but i do really do like this combo of the es on hit and then the uh, double conversion okay so for the melding of the flesh you want to get one with a minus four percent and then minus 70 so basically a max rolled melding of the flesh maybe if it's cheaper to get corrupted blood on this then get it over here and that'll probably save some money but i think they're probably about the same price or maybe this is probably even more and i think that is all of the jewels we're using and uh, let's see. So for the small clusters, um, it is pretty tight. Pretty much all of these are 35% increased effect introspection jewels, and you just want to get fire res as a main main stat. And then that's good secondary suffix to get is either all res or um, intelligence or or I guess all attributes is okay too. Okay, so that is pretty much the build. Go over the ascendancy real quick. So ascendancy. First of all, we take the champion and then pass the duelist. I mean, you don't really need this. Uh, because it doesn't really matter but it does give you two passive points and instead of taking necromancer which is kind of sad we're going over to guardian and i did try try to grab guardian with the forbidden flame jewel and um i can grab it if i do drop some of this max res over here and some other points um you grab the jewel slot here and then you grab this jewel slot here so you need six extra points so this is four over here and then, then there's five and then there's six so in a more uh damage oriented config i could either have two choices i could either go grab point blank grab precise technique drop elemental overload and then use a uh sword like this a replica dream feather with resolute technique um and then that'll allow you to drop precision and give you a little bit more reservation and then uh you get the bonuses of point blank so about point blank too it's a little bit deceiving because the if you remember from the um, explanation of how our how many hits we get our mol on Molten Strike, more like 70% of our damage is coming from the Nimbus return projectiles, and return projectiles count as have traveled the full distance. So if we look at the point blank keystone, you can see that you do get 30% at the start. So the first three projectiles that we shoot out with uh, Molten Strike, because remember we're getting three hits from when we attack, these will get this 30% bonus of 30% more damage. But uh, since the return projectiles are actually traveled the full distance, they're gonna get zero benefit from point blank. So point blank, if you pop it in PLB, it's gonna like shoot up your damage numbers. But in reality, it's not actually giving you that much of a damage increase. If you think uh, out of 12 projectiles, only three are getting um, that bonus. 30% more damage so it's really not even that big of a damage bonus when you actually you know in real game so I think it was kind of um, not really worth it in the end so I'm just skipped it entirely and if I did want to go for a more damage setup um, what I would do is I'd go grab this jewel slot here this jewel slot here and then either you buy the um, necromancer Forbidden Flame and Flesh, or you buy the Guardian Forbidden Flame and Flesh. So I have the Guardian Forbidden Flame and Flesh. So what I do is I take this, um, the Necromancer node and then I just use these Guardian jewels. So you get both. And that is a pretty nice um, damage increase. And then you do, you will end up losing three Fire Res. So that would put me at 82. And without this Militant Faith, I'd be at 80 All Res, which is still a very respectable number for um, Transcendence and League. Okay, let's go over the Pantheons I'm using. So I am using the soul of our Kali for reduced damage taken over time and uh, you know it does give you quite a lot of nice um, benefits and after that um, we're using Relakesh so with bleed if you have 100% of your physical damage taken as a different element which means you're not taking any physical damage it's um, bleeding cannot be inflicted on you because bleeding can only be inflicted by physical damage I believe and since you're not taking any fizz damage just the bleed 
just doesn't happen, right? Same thing with Ignite. If you don't take any fire damage, then... Or if you don't deal any fire damage, you can't really ignite, but it's kind of how it works. So most of the time with my flask up, I'm not even getting any bleed inflicted on me. And if I do get a bleed, the damage is so small, like small because of how little fizz damage I'm taking. And then also moving while bleeding doesn't cause you to take extra damage. And then since we have enough, like what, 4k ES regen, we can out regen any kind of bleed um, the game will put on you. So it's uh, bleeding is kind of solved like that. And let's go over our skill gems. So for um, Molten Strike, there is um, a couple of setups people like to do, like the, there is um, Concentrated Effect with Slower Proj. But um, in the calculator, that only increased my hits by 1 to 2 from the main, like the first attack of 9 Proj. So instead of 3, we'd go up to about 4, um, maybe 5 in some cases. But at the end of the day, we'd have to lose two 40% more damage multipliers. So Void Manip and uh, Elemental Focus and the damage was a lot lower. Even if I'm getting two extra hits with the Concentrated Effects Slower Proj, I was um, getting more hits, but since we're losing 80% more damage over here, then it ended up being less damage than this current setup. So the setup we're using right now is Molten Strike, uh, Awakened Multi-Strike, Volatility, uh, Awakened Elemental Focus, Void Manipulation, and a GMP or Awakened GMP. So this setup actually is doing the most damage as far as I've calculated and what I've seen in game. Okay, for our um, first aura setup here, we have in the helmet, we got Wrath, um, Vitality, Determination, and Discipline. And our second aura setup in the gloves is Purity of Elements. Uh, we got a uh, Vol Haste, and then we have Purity of Fire and an Awakened Enlighten. And for the uh, March of the Legion setup, we have um, Grace over here. It's a level 34 Grace. It's pretty crazy. We got uh, Inspiration, and we have our uh, Vol Smite, and we have our Awaken in Power over here. The way you get your um, March of the Legion setup going is basically you get Inspiration, and then you get a Flask with 25% uh, percent reduced mana cost of skills, increased by 95%, and then the rest of it is just from the Militant Faith, uh, reduced mana cost of skills. Uh, let's see, and then, okay, so in our shield we have Precision, uh, Molten Shell, and Defiance Banner, and then um, you can actually probably drop Molten Shell in this configuration because I've pretty much tanked all of the abilities without Molten Shell, but just having it is kind of nice. I guess, I, yeah, I probably could replace this for like Totem, Ancestral Protector, and get a lot more damage, but like I said, this version of the build was to try and see how tanky it could get. And I think, yeah, we did kind of achieve that. Okay, so for the weapon, we have our Sniper's Mark, Mark on Hit, and then we have Leap Slam. All right, so that is pretty much the character, guys. Um, it was pretty fun building it, and it is very fun to play. I mean, nothing can really kill you unless you're doing some kind of like crazy Valdo map. But yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll probably be changing this um, setup to, you know, kind of playing around different configurations, going for a little bit more damage, or trying out how this... Um, how this kind of setup feels with charms and all that kind of stuff. But that'll be it for this one, guys. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.